a new set of tires will completely change the way your bike rides. Today, we're here at Zach's Bikes, and it's new tire day. There's a lot of different choices, you know. You got the Minion, the Sector Aggressor, Minion DHR2, the Asa guy, and then even within it, there's all these different types, you know, of casings and compounds and everything like that. So, what do you, when you have somebody coming in, like, how would you explain that to them? Um, well, first, I ask what kind of riding they're wanting to do. Most people are riding locally, so I do have an idea of what the trails are like and what the conditions are like. Our trails don't get super, super loose. So a lot of the time through the summer, it's like just kind of loose over hard pack. And then we do have a handful of trails that kind of get a little bit loamy. So you do want something with a little more bite. So it's, it's kind of a mix between something that rolls fast for that hard pack stuff, but then if you go out and ride the trails that are a little on the looser side, something that does well with both. So a lot of the times I'll recommend a slightly less aggressive tread in the back. Like something like these guys here um, do really well. And then um, uh, like a DHF obviously for the front or uh, something like a DHR. Those guys, the Asta guy, um, those guys do really good um, front and back depending on how aggressive of a tread pattern you're looking for. And then looking at the um, all of these different designations right here, um, the TR obviously is tubeless ready. The XO is uh, gonna be a tougher tire basically. And then the 3C just has to do with the different tire uh, rubber compounds. Okay. Um, depending on how, what kind of traction you're looking for, we don't generally get really slick roots and rocks, things like that, or high desert. Okay. So that's, that's another thing to keep in mind when you're looking at that 3C designation. Okay. Is what tread or rubber compound is it that you want to go with and, and match it to the type of trails that we ride and the weather that we ride. If, if somebody rides locally, but never rides in the winter, yeah. then they don't need a tire that's going to work in those conditions. They just need their tire to work in the summer. Yeah, so the type of trails and the type of riding you do matters a lot. And like that's what, when I was trying to pick out, I knew Maxxis was a good brand and that that's something I was looking at. But when I was watching all these YouTube videos, you got these guys that ride nothing but Southern California or nothing but Squamish, BC. And I'm like, well, why am I really taking advice from them? Really, I should be going down to my local bike shop, the guys that I ride with and the guys that ride the same trails as me. Get there, hey, what type of tires do you ride? What's good for the trails here? So Yeah, yeah. So we've got the DHR that we're putting on, as well as the Maxxis Asagai with a 2.4 and a 2.6 okay. going on the Fuel EX. And you had XR4s, front and back. Okay. Now looking at these tires, do these even need to be replaced? I'm kind of doing it just because I want to um, try out Maxxis and what do you really look at the for? The front doesn't look bad and what I usually look at is um, there there is a tread wear indicator built onto some tires. Oh, okay. So when that is worn down, then it's definitely time to replace your tire. Okay. There's a couple other indicators because not all tires have those. Other thing that I look at is these little grooves that are generally in the center lugs of the tire. Mm -hmm. Once those grooves are gone, I usually recommend replacing the tire because okay. those are biting edges. Mm -hmm. Once those edges are gone, you've lost some of the performance of your tire. And then also looking at the side lugs. Yeah, so this tire, it's not worn out yet, but it's, it's getting close. Does it look like 
that yep. is kind of already all dried yeah, up there, and stuff. There should be a puddle of sealant in there. How would you check it then if you're at your house and you don't want to have to pull the tire off the rim and reseat it or whatever? Um, I usually will just take my valve core out. And then this is just an old spoke. You can, oh, okay. use, you can use an old zip tie or yeah, yeah. any zip tire. Something like that, and I just use it as a, a dipstick. Okay, like an oil check. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. On the sidewall right here. Mm -hmm. So it's showing you that the tire rotates in this direction. Okay. When you're going forward on the bike. Yep. Keep it all straight in my head. With the bike facing this direction. Yep. I know the tire is supposed to roll this direction. And I have the wheel facing this direction. With the rotor on the, the brake rotor. Yep. Side. So you're shaking that up. So we're running tubeless for anybody who doesn't know. That's what most guys who, you know, ride trails ride tubeless. And then this is the sealant. So how does the sealant actually work? And what's the importance of shaking it up like that? Um, so there's the liquid and then in the liquid is a bunch of particles. You can see that kind okay. of yep. gray, in it, gray in there. Yep. Um, you want to get that into the tire because it settles at the bottom of your bottle. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't shake it up, then you're not gonna get any of that in there. And that's okay. what it really needs to be able to seal those small punctures. Okay. That's like the coagulant or whatever that actually mm -hmm. seals. Yeah. That's a Topeak one, right? Yeah, Topeak Smart Gauge. Okay. 